How's it going everyone, it's been a very long time since I covered Demon Slayer in depth but with the latest season packing a lot of punches and of course the Ufotable going all out with this animation, it's only right that I finally jump back into my roots. This channel was built off on Demon Slayer so why not cover all 25 Blood Demon Arts which were revealed to us in the series. As for what Blood Demon Arts are, well basically they are the abilities inherited from the Demon King Kibutsuji Muzan, each Blood Demon Arts being unique from one another. So to put it simply, these are like the breathing techniques for demons, but on a completely different level. Currently in the anime, we have been introduced to the likes of Daki and Gyotaro, and their abilities are insanely overpowered, and it makes you think how intricate the other blood demon arts are. But before we get into explaining all the blood demon arts, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to stay updated on latest uploads. This video will contain spoilers from the manga. This unique ability utilized by the demons is in a league of its own. The power and force which comes with an individual blood demon arts is enough to destroy entire villages single-handedly. Throughout this video, we will uncover the abilities of the very strongest demons, including Muzan, Akaza, Kokushibo, and many more. So without further ado, let's get straight in. Well, the very first demon we will be diving in on is the famous Swamp Demon. He was known for targeting young girls in a town and it was only until Kazumi begged for Tanjiro's help to find his fiancée, Satoko, who mysteriously vanished when they were walking together one night. Anyways, the Swamp Demon was able to split his personality and was very difficult to fight against for Tanjiro. As for the Swamp Demon's blood demon arts, it is called Swamp Domain. This ability is able to conjure a pocket swamp dimension in which he can roam around freely. The swamp often manifests as a puddle that travels on the ground which can be used to infiltrate households and perform kidnappings with nobody realizing. Although the puddle looks small enough to fit one person, the inside is far larger and has the properties of an actual swamp. The swamp demon can put this swamp to his advantage by attacking targets using his great swimming ability. On top of that, the swamp demon, like I mentioned before, could clone himself and split his personality into three different versions of himself. This made it exceptionally difficult for Tanjiro and Nezuko to fight against. Following up is Yahaba, who at the time was ordered by Muzan to find the boy with the Hanafuda earrings in Asakusa. Yahaba was accompanied by another demon called Susamaru, which we will explain next, but for now let's understand the abilities of Yahaba. He was able to track down Tanjiro alongside two other people who were accompanying him. Yahaba was quite a powerful demon possessing a blood demon art and displaying a proficiency in utilizing in combat. His unorthodox blood demon art makes it extremely challenging for demon slayers to counter and overcome, especially since they are effectively invisible and intangible. When combined with Susumaru's blood demon art, their destructive output drastically increases, allowing them to flush Tamayo out of hiding and destroy their hideout without much trouble. Yahaba acquires enhanced tracking and his blood demon art is known as Koketsu Arrow, which allows him to create and manipulate invisible red arrows by blinking the eyes on each of his palms. He is capable of moving the arrows in any direction he pleases and can seemingly spawn as many as he wants. Despite being intangible, Yahaba can manipulate matter and their interaction through the related vectors with his blood demon art by forcing the desired target in whatever direction the arrow was pointing. The second person to this deadly duo is none other than Susamaru. She alongside Yahaba were ordered to kill Tanjiro and like mentioned before her blood demon arts worked pretty well alongside Yahaba's. Her blood demon arts is classed as Hiyasobi Tamari which gives her the ability to throw her balls and I know that sounded very wrong. Anyway, she can either throw or kick them at such intense speeds and power that she can completely annihilate any limbs with a single touch. Susumaru uses this in conjunction with Yohaba's own blood demon arts to increase its power. Now moving further down the Demon Slayer timeline, we come across the spider family in the series, so we'll first go through the father. Since Rui had shared his blood around to his so-called family, they all gained unique traits from him. The father had obtained superhuman strength as well as insane durability taking on attacks from Enosuke and Tanjiro head on. The father spider demon possessed the ability to shed his outer skin in order to transform into a more powerful form with increased physical power and regenerative abilities, making him even stronger and durable than his original form. Next up is the spider demon's son. Although this family doesn't really acquire a distinguished blood demon arts, they do sort of count since Ruby spread his abilities around allowing them to gain insane powers. The son's ability was known as poison sputum, which allowed him to spit out venom, which then dissolved whatever it touched. This is where things get a little more interesting. Next up is a spider demon daughter. She initially grouped with Ruby as a lone demon, not knowing what she would eventually get herself into and that was Ruby's little demonic family as she played his older sister. Her blood demon arts is known as spider physiology where her body takes on a spider-like form just like the rest of the family. She also has silk manipulation in her locker where she can manipulate threads made from her own cells, this time in a fashion similar to silk that forms a cocoon instead of threads that resemble wires. Despite being extremely 
extremely soft, her silk is stronger and more durable than metal. Even a normal Demon Slayer can't cut or pierce it with a Nichiren blade. On top of this ability, she can also manipulate acid, where she can generate acid made from her own blood and flesh. The acid she creates can easily dissolve a person, however the process is a little slow. Now onto the spider demon mother, where her blood demon art is also spider physiology inherited from Rui. One of her sub techniques is string manipulation, where her main form of attack is focused on spider threads created from her flesh and cells. She materializes these strings from the tips of her fingers and can extend the range of the strings to cover an entire mountain. One of her main sub techniques from her blood demon arts is puppetry, which allows her to manipulate corpses like puppets. She does this by attaching her strings to her intended victims, she can successfully turn them into virtual puppets that she then uses to combat her opponents from a safe distance. She can even use these strings to somehow bring out the full physical power of a controlled puppet to its maximum, but it comes at the cost of putting a puppet to severe physical pain due to it. This ability also allows her to control the corpses of demons, as she somehow acquired and preserved that dead body of a demon and prevented it from disintegrating to black smoke for use in combat. The closer the strings connected to her are, the more power she can exert over the puppets she manipulates. She can also manipulate spiders by creating and commanding small white spiders to stealthily attach her threads to her intended victims without them noticing. These spiders also have similar traits to demons as they burn up upon getting sliced by a Nichiren blade. The final member of the spider the family and the most feared is the former Lower Moon 5, Ruby. His character was the reason why Tanjiro was able to surpass his limits and awaken the breath of the sun. I'm sure we all witnessed such a crazy scene, but honestly Ruby's blood demon arts was just as impressive known as thread manipulation, allowing him to create thin thread like strings from his own cells and manipulate them however he pleases. He typically extends the threads from his fingertips like a puppet master. Due to his own body's durability, the threads Rui manipulates are extremely durable and sharp, being able to cut through Nichiren blades and blocking strikes from them as well. Rui can further amplify their strength and durability by pumping his blood through them, giving them a blood red colour. Rui has displayed terrifying proficiency in utilising his threads for combat purposes, making use of the environment to spawn a barrage of string attacks or manifest unavoidable web techniques to trap and slice his opponents into pieces. Along this list is the 17th technique which we will divulge into and that is the Flute Demon. He was actually introduced in a one shot of the series where he was responsible for the death of a small group of demon slayers and several civilians. His blood demon arts is of course flute manipulation which allows him to use his flute in various ways to cause damaging effects to his victims. When his flute is played, it disrupts the nervous system of his opponents. If they try to move one of their feet, their head will move instead. If they attempt to move one of their hands, their feet will move, etc. Thus making it nearly impossible to accurately move. This demon can also use his flute to summon two black wolves and command them to kill his opponents. It is unsure whether he can summon more than two demonic wolves. Up next is a demon known as Hyro, as he was the main antagonist of Kyojiro Rengoku's story. As for his story, he was sped by Shinjiro Rengoku, who was Kyojiro's father, and then eventually Hyro would become the Lower Moon too. Anywho, Hyro's blood demon art is called Capture Cavity. This grants Hyro the ability to turn into a wolf like shadow and also gives his body countless artillery popping out. He creates multiple shadowy wolves from his blood that emanate from his cloak. These wolves have the same same suction effect as his regular shadows and thus can absorb a plethora of physical attacks and make them exceptionally hard to kill. These wolves can also conjure guns and other weapons. He can also combine these shadowy wolves to become one massive werewolf. Now this character is someone we are all familiar with and that is Kyogai. He played a huge role in the development of the ultimate trio that we know as Tanjiro, Zenitsu and Inosuke. Kyogai is known as a drum demon because he can change the surroundings of his mansion into different positions. This blood demon art is known as drumming, acquiring six Suzumi drums on his body with each one of them changing the position of the rooms in his famous drum house. The drum on his right shoulder causes the rooms he is in to rotate to the right. The left shoulder makes the room rotate to the left. The drum on his right leg causes the room to rotate forwards, his left leg makes the room rotate backwards, the drum on his stomach creates a three claw like slash attack and finally the drum on his back teleports him into another room in the mansion. During the Asakusa arc we come across a lot of distinguished characters, more importantly Tanjiro meeting the likes of Tamayo and Yushiro. So the 14th blood demon art we are going to dive into is Yushiro's. Although he is overprotective of Tamayo, he creates a close bond to both Tanjiro and Nezuko despite his personality. Yushiro's blood demon art is called blindfold, allowing him to create paper talismans which possess the ability to mask or reveal something's presence. By placing these on certain objects of his choosing, he can get rid of their presence, otherwise by placing it on 
against someone's forehead, he can enhance their vision by revealing the presence of masked objects. Yushiro has used his blood demon knot to completely hide the entrance to Tamayo's clinic in Asakusa and use it to create fake walls to make it less suspicious as well. However, he couldn't mask its existence completely from Yahaba's own blood demon knot's tracking ability. He can also render himself invisible using his blindfold. Yushiro has also used this to reveal Yahaba's hidden arrows and bestow this power to Tanjiro as well. During the Infinity Castle arc, it seems Yushiro's blood demon art has developed considerably. Not only can he create dozens of paper talismans at once, but he can use them to completely mask their presence but still see one another, granting them a slight advantage against Muzan. His blood demon art can allow two beings to use their vision in tandem to increase their efficiency in combat, as seen with Obanai Iguro and his pet snake. Kaburo Maru. Yushiro's paper talismans were able to link Kiria and his sisters to the location of the demon slayers in real time through the Kasugai crows that were also wearing paper talismans on their neck. This allows them to not only see through the paper talismans on the Kasugai crows, but also issues commands to them. They have used this connection to gain information of battle results, casualties, and the Infinity Castle's constantly changing structure. Alongside this, Yushiro can also control the minds of people, where he displayed a new blood demon knot in the final arc of Demon Slayer. This allowed him to put an individual with his blindfold under hypnosis and take control of their minds and vision. If used on a demon, he is able to make use of their techniques through them as shown when he used Nakime's blood demon knots to bring the demon slayers to the surface whilst the infinity castle was collapsing. His control over them is not only mental but also physical, as evidenced by his brief contest with Muzan over Nakime, where both parties controlled her body as they wrestled for command. Yushiro impressively was able to fight Muzan, absorbing his cells through Nakime, thus implying Yushiro manipulates his victims on a cellular level. One drawback to this ability is that Yushiro is required to be proximity of his target to control them. From Yushiro, we now move on to Tamayo. Her character has played a pivotal role in Demon Slayer all the way from the beginning to the very end. As for what her blood demon arts is, we got to witness it in the fight against Yahaba and Susamaru. This is known as blood bewitchment, where she can create a branch of blood techniques that requires her to draw her own blood that then creates numerous effects and reactions from her intended targets using the blood scent. One of her techniques from her blood demon arts is called scent of illusory blood visual dream. This is a hallucination that hinders the vision of the affected by creating beautiful flower patterns around them. Her second technique is called magical aroma of daylight, which acts as a truth serum, causing brain function to decrease and will make the recipient confess their lies and not keep their secrets. It can be harmful to humans, and honestly Tamayo is one of the more intelligent demons, someone who played a huge role in the last arc of Demon Slayer. Next up is a character who we got to see in the Mugen Train movie and was a demon that caught all of our attention. This is the Lower Moon 1 Enmu. We witness his abilities and blood demon knots in the fight against Kyojiro Rengoku and Tanjiro. His blood demon knot is called Sleep Inducement, where it grants him the ability to force anyone into a deep sleep. He can do this through different means, some more subtle than others, but all effectively leaving his foes vulnerable and unable to fight. The slumber induced is fairly potent and takes considerable effort to wake up, as seen when Nezuko headbutted Tanjiro to no avail. This state of sleep is however not perfect, as Enmu carefully preferred to stay away from the demon slayers out of fear that his bloodlust could awaken them, although he is far less cautious against normal human targets. The next technique apart of his blood demon knots is probably the most powerful. This is classed as dream manipulation, as this can allow him to enter, manipulate and control someone's dreams when they're asleep. When using his technique, his victims experience joyous dreams, normally suited to each person and take advantage of their vulnerabilities, all but ensuring they are unable to tell the difference from reality and thus rapidly sucking them into a real fantasy which is right before them, making it far easier for Enmu to manipulate his victims. Just like he can grant fantasy dreams, Enmu is able to force nightmares, which he uses both as a psychological attack and a means of torture, something he's particularly fond of, especially when preying on humans. Enmu's dreams are extremely effective but they are not perfect, as one is capable of resisting its effects through willpower, allowing an affected person to realise they are in fact living an illusion, however realising they are in a dream is not enough to end the induced sleep. Tanjiro was able to force himself out of his hypnosis by committing suicide inside his dream. When trapping someone inside their dreams, he enters the realm inside their minds. This dimension, however, has clear limits with borders allowing one to enter the victim's subconscious where their spiritual core resides. Should this core be destroyed, it effectively destroys the target's mind, leaving their body as an empty shell, thus allowing Enmu to kill his victims in their dream. However, it's to be noted that there's a danger of being affected and possibly mentally changed by the unconscious mind of this victim. 
as seen when one of Enmu's human agents is touched by Tanjiro's inner kindness and subsequently loses his will to destroy the spiritual core and changes his mind on committing an evil act. For this reason, Enmu always has someone else to enter the target's dream instead of entering himself, otherwise it could lead to Enmu switching up and becoming a good guy. Recently in Season 2 of Demon Slayer, we have been introduced to the likes of Tengen Uzui as well as the Entertainment District arc. Through this, we got to witness the likes of a very powerful demon and that is Upper Moon 6, Darkie. At the moment, this arc in the anime has everyone completely hooked, with her blood demon not being known as Obi Slash Manipulation, which grants her the ability to create flower patterned Obi Sashes from her flesh, as well as freely manipulating them at will. Darkie often creates these sashes from her back and retracts them back into her body when not in use. She also has displayed the ability to exert control over her OB from extremely far distances. Her sashes are noted to be soft like silk, yet as sharp if not sharper than most Nichiren blades. In combat, Daki uses her OB to perform long range attacks and even uses it as a shield to protect herself, making her blood demon art an extremely effective blend of offense and defense. Her sashes are so powerful that they could repel and block attacks from Tengen's explosives and slice up buildings with ease. Furthermore, they are especially difficult to cut because of their soft properties. Her sashes can also store objects, usually humans she wants to eat for later, that she traps inside of them. To free someone from being trapped in the sashes, one must cut it apart whilst avoiding cutting the people trapped inside, immediately freeing anyone and returning them to their original form. Darkie mainly uses this ability to store humans that she wishes to eat in a space underground and consume them later. Lastly, Darkie can transmute her own neck into a sash to prevent herself from being decapitated. The next technique a part of her blood demon arts is called Sentient Flash Obi, which is basically a living Obi that supervises the humans inside her sashes, as well as capture other people too. It's like another person within her technique. Obviously, in the Demon Slayer series, there seems to be a theme of having various duos, Well, a part of Daki is her older brother Gyotaro, who is also an Upper Moon 6. His character has been a hot topic of recent weeks, and we got to see him display his insane combat skills in the latest episodes. Gyotaro's blood demon art is blood manipulation, where he can manipulate his own body's blood in various ways. He is shown to generate them from his flesh or from open wounds on his body, or even release blood at will from his veins. It is implied that Gyotaro doesn't run out of blood due to his regenerative abilities, giving him a virtually infinite source of blood to fuel his techniques. And in combat, he usually creates barrages of solidified sickle-shaped blood as sharp as blades that can travel at immensely fast speeds to attack his opponents. Gyotaro is capable of freely manipulating these blood slashes at will, altering their movements until they hit his opponent or shaping them however he pleases. Also, his blood sickles are coated in deadly poison. Gyotaro's attacks were so powerful that had the likes of Tengen Izui, Tanji Zenitsu and Inosuke on the back foot. This was shown when Gyotaro had stabbed Inosuke through the chest and he can even create his shield out of blood which is extremely durable. We are now down to our last 9 blood demon arts of this series and next up is the cowardly Kaigaku, who was once a disciple of the former thunder pillar and classmate of Zenitsu. However, Kaigaku doesn't necessarily have a blood demon arts, but I guess you can say his abilities have hit new heights since becoming a demon. Kaigaku specializes in breath of thunder, but due to him developing a blood demon art, it conjoined with his breathing technique and just made his thunder breathing overpowered to the max. Kaigaku can utilize second form right spirit where he releases five arch slashes accompanied by lightning in quick succession. Next is his third form Thunderswarm as he surrounds the enemy with waves of arch lightning and attacks them from all directions. Following up from this is fourth form Distant Thunder, generating a ball of electricity that releases waves of strong multi-directional lightning bolts from afar. Then is his fifth form Heat Lightning, unleashing long ranged upward sword slashes accompanied by lightning. Finally, the last technique is sixth form Rumble and Flash, where he releases a series of powerful long range lightning attacks that strike his opponent from distance. This next character is introduced during the Swordsmith the Village arc, which happens after the Entertainment District. This is something a lot of us are looking forward to being animated. Anyways, next up is Gyoko, who is the Upper Moon 5. His character is very, very unique and quite complex. Gyoko's Blood Demon Arts is not as porcelain vases as he revolves around these vases. He can presumably spawn them anywhere within his vicinity and create multiple pots of varying sizes at once. Gyoko first displayed the ability to freely teleport from one pot to another instantaneously, offsetting his lack of legs and allowing him to travel far distances with minimal effort as well. This gives him the ability to dodge attacks pretty well. Gyoko can also trap objects such as people inside of his pots, similar to how Doki used their sashes to store people in as well. If the object he wishes to seal is too big, the pots can simply compress them to fit inside. The pots also seem to give Gyoko liberty of whatever is inside, which he uses to merge the swordsmith together in impossible ways and allows him to create whatever he pleases inside of them. 
Gyoko is also able to spawn different kinds of fish monsters to attack and destroy, each having their own characteristics, such as sharp claws or sharp teeth. The following techniques to Gyoko's Blood Demon Arts are as follows. The first technique being called Thousand Needle Fish Kill, where he can summon floating fish demons from his pots, which spit out a barrage of poisonous needles. The poison contains paralyzing properties which immobilizes the target. The second technique is called Water Prison Pot, as Gyoko creates a vast structure made out of water that traps the target. The water suffocates the target and prevents them from using any breathing technique, making it difficult for them to break free and escape. The third technique of Gyoko's is known as Octopus Vast Hell, manifesting gigantic tentacles from his pot to restrain his targets. These tentacles are strong enough to destroy a shed and are noted to be extremely durable. The fourth technique is called 10,000 Gliding Slimefish, as he can summon a total of 10,000 slimefish from multiple pots to attack his targets and eat them, leaving nothing but bones. When these fishes are cut, their severed bodies will spread a poisonous liquid before they turn to dust. The poison can also be absorbed through the skin. Once the poison is absorbed, the target presumably dies. The fifth and final technique of Gyoko's Blood Demon Art is classed as Killer Fish Scales. When Gyoko enters his true form, he can deliver a wide range barrage of physical attacks using his immense speed. This technique was powerful enough to decimate trees in the surrounding area. Another notable character who played a huge role in the Swordsmith Village arc was none other than Han Tengu. This specific demon is ranked as the Upper Moon 4 and was really interesting. Han Tengu's Blood Demon Art is quite unique, being called Emotion Manifestation. His Blood Demon Art is similar to the Swamp Demon, we mentioned earlier in this video, as Hentengu can manifest his emotions as powerful younger clones of himself with their own unique appearances, personalities and abilities. These clones are personifications of a certain emotion Hentengu has felt before and they mainly display that emotion. Each one is identified by a kanji tattoo on their tongue, labelling their core emotion. Han Tengu can control these clones however he sees fit, though he usually lets them act upon their own will. However, he did control and command Urami's body to kill a bunch of swordsmiths after he was beheaded. This ability is activated when Han Tengu's head is cut off, where his head and body turn into two separate clones, with those clones splitting into two after they are decapitated. However, they are at their strongest when there are only four of them. Damaging the clones' tongues has been shown to slow their regeneration speed momentarily. On top of this, his clones will never die as long as their main body is still alive, making it nearly impossible to fight and defeat Han Tengu alone. It is later revealed that Han Tengu developed this ability through being constantly cornered throughout his life, causing the intense emotions he felt to personify through his blood. As for the specific blood demon arts, it's going to be quite a long one, so stay with me. Each of the clones that Han Tengu lets out all have their own individual blood demon arts, starting off with Sekido, who represents Han Tengu's anger. Sekido's blood demon art is called Lightning Generation, as Sekido can summon lightning bolts from the sky from his Kakara, the lightning generated has a wide area of effect and can cause those hit by it to lose consciousness or paralyze their opponents in an instance, allowing them to subdue multiple targets at once. One drawback to his lightning is that it cannot pass through anything made from his own cells, such as the body parts of any of Han Tengu's clones. The second clone of Han Tengu is called Karaku as he represents the relaxation within himself. His individual blood demon art is called Aerokinesis, allowing him to generate and manipulate wind using his flesh maple leaf shaped Uchiwa. By simply swinging his Uchiwa down, Karaku can generate a gust of wind strong enough to blow Moichiro into a forest in an instant leaving gigantic craters, level an entire building, and crush Demon Slayer and Demon alike under its immense pressure. Even knocking them unconscious, Karaku is capable of using his Blood Demon art tactically, turning the entire battlefield into gusts of strong winds that make it hard for his opponents to move. However, this ability can be used against him by anyone who has possession of his Uchiwa, as shown when Nezuko used Karaku's own fan to blow him away. Han Tengu's third clone is called Aizetsu as he represents Han Tengu's sadness. As for what his blood demon arts is, it is called Spear Projection, allowing him to project the thrusting attack of his Yari over great distances, being able to attack his targets from afar. The fourth clone of Han Tengu's emotion is named Urogi, who represents happiness. His blood demon art is called Sonic Scream, which generates powerful sound waves from his mouth. The power from Urogi's scream is strong enough to make Tanjiro bleed from his nose and ear. The fifth clone is named Zohakuten, as he represents Han Tengu's anger and hatred. His blood demon art is known as Wood Manipulation. This grants him the ability to manipulate and alter wood from the flora in his surroundings by tapping one of the many drums on his back. 
Zohakuten can also combine the blood demon arts of the previous four clones into a wood dragon, as it unleashes a combination of their abilities. The sixth and final clone of Hantengus is called Urami, as he represents his resentment. His blood demon art is a last resort where it allows him to alter his sides and make Hantengu hide inside of his heart. After Hantengu is someone we've seen a little bit of, and that is Nakime, who is the Upper Moon 4, as she took this rank after the defeat of Hantengu. Nakime's blood demon art is known as Infinity Castle, where her ability takes on the form of an extra dimensional space that houses a fortress of infinite scale. As the owner of this infinity fortress, Nikime also possesses control over the space, being able to manipulate and alter it at will by simply strumming her biwa. In her fortress there are countless rooms with seemingly endless variety, like an open room filled with giant pillars where the fight against Kokushibo took place, a small garden where the fight against Doma took place, a corridor leading to several other rooms where the fight against Akaza took place, as Nikime sits at the centre of the infinity castle with the entire space being distorted around her. Nikime can also create portals within her own infinity fortress, for example when Mitsuri Kanroji had attacked her, she used a portal to evade it. We are now down to our final 5 of this video, so up next is the Upper Moon 3 Akaza. We saw quite a bit of him in the Mugen Train movie and he holds one of the highest positions under the Demon King. Akaza's blood demon arts is called Destructive Death, as it takes the form of a martial arts style that combines shockwave like attacks and his Soryu style, which he mastered when he was human. The shockwaves Akaza manipulates are blue in colour and can take on many forms, such as near invisible air pressure, flowing streams or cannon shaped spikes. He is able to generate them at will from any distance and seemingly from any part of his body. In combat, Akaza has his shockwaves accompany his own punches and kicks to amplify his destructive capabilities, making his attacks covered in a faint blue light. Akaza has a decent amount of techniques under his blood demon arts, the first being Compass Needle, where he deploys a light blue snowflake shaped compass underneath him with numbers ranging from 1 to 12. This technique allows Akaza to sense a person's fighting spirit, letting him detect and track the locations of his opponents, even from his blind spots and where and how his opponents will attack him. This technique can also be used to discern an opponent's weak points, as stated by Tanjiro when Akaza always instinctively aimed for his vitals, as if his fists were magnets attracted to them. Akaza always has this technique activated when engaging in combat, making all the other techniques he unleashes extremely difficult to counter and evade while making his attacks all the more lethal. Next up is his air type. This is when Akaza punches the empty air in front of him, creating a shockwave from the pressure of his fists and then sends it flying towards his enemies. These airborne shockwaves can be created multiple times in quick succession and can be unleashed in the sky or on the ground. Following up is Disorder. This technique is when Akaza rapidly punches in front of himself, creating a barrage of shockwaves. The fourth technique part of Akaza's destructive death is called Annihilation Type. This is one of Akaza's most powerful techniques, where he lunges forward and punches with so much force it creates an insane shockwave. The fifth technique is known as Eight Layered Demon Core, as he unleashes eight powerful punches. Each of these punches, if connected, could kill you instantly if your name is not Tanjiro. Following up is Akaza's leg type. This is where Akaza simply just uses his legs in combat by taking advantage of his insane kicks. On top of that is his crushing type, with the sole goal being to pulverize his enemy with countless amounts of attacks. And lastly is Akaza's final form and that is Blue Silver Chaotic Afterglow. As this is his ultimate martial arts technique, Akaza creates an omnidirectional barrage of thin and sharp shockwaves that seemingly strike out of nowhere from a flurry of punches. This attack was so powerful that it could completely negate Tomioka's dead calm technique, a move known for its immense defensive capabilities. With the Akaza's blood demon not said and done, it's time to move on to the upper moon too, and that is Doma. His character is insanely strong but we didn't get to see much of his full potential being brought out in the fight against Shinobu due to his death being so unexpected. I guess you could say his laid back nature cost him his life. Anyways, Doma's blood demon not is known as cryokinesis, where it grants him extremely powerful cryokinesis. He can generate ice and frost from his flesh and blood, and can spawn it anywhere in his vicinity, as well as manipulate it at will, allowing him to unleash incredibly powerful ice attacks. Also, the ice created from his blood demon arts is extremely lethal to those that inhale it causing the cells of the victim's lungs to die and rendering them unable to breathe very quickly. His ice and frost have also been noted to be extremely cold, as shown when the air around Doma's frost was cold enough to make Shinobu's lungs feel as if they were about to burst and nearly freeze Kanao's body and surroundings just by coming into contact with it. Just like Akaza, Doma also has a wide range of attacks, first one which is Frozen Lotus. This is where he delivers a forward fan slash that creates razor sharp ice shards along with several ice lotuses. Next is Baron hanging 
Living Garden. This is a series of 8 to 10 successive fan attacks that generates ice shards to slice the enemy into pieces. The third technique being freezing clouds as he creates a large wave of cloud wind and uses his fans to scatter them. This technique nearly froze Kanao's eyeballs. After this is his lotus vines. Similar to his frozen lotus technique, Doma creates several lotuses made of ice and long frost vines that extend his reach and can capture or slice up his opponents. The next technique has a bit of an odd name to it but it's called cold white princesses as Doma creates the upper body of two female humanoid figures at the end of lotuses using ice with the ability to blow icy air towards his target. The wind generated was cold enough to instantly freeze the surrounding wood bridges and water. Kanao noted that this technique is extremely broad and has a long reach. Following up is Wintry Icicles being able to create numerous icicles to impale his target. The seventh technique of Domas is called Scattering Lotuses as he swings his fans and creates a blizzard of long range razor sharp ice shards shaped like lotus petals. The eighth technique is known as Crystalline Divine Child as Doma creates miniature ice replicas of himself to battle his opponents. He has shown to be capable of creating up to 6 clones at once, all possessing roughly the same skill and proficiency as Doma, however not to the same calibre as him. Also these clones are able to record any information it gathers during battle and relay it to Doma, allowing him to better fight his opponents. However one drawback to this technique is that the clones require concentration in order to maintain their functionality, as seen when they disappeared when Shinobu's poison started to take effect on Doma. The final technique of Doma's Blood Demon Art is called Rime Water Dili Bodhisattva, as Doma can create an enormous Bodhisattva statue surrounded by lotuses made of ice. Its most notable trait is its ability to generate huge gusts of Doma's deadly ice from its mouth and deliver powerful physical attacks using its large arms. It is also able to grab targets using its hands. Down to our final three Blood Demon Arts techniques and now we will be introducing Kokushibo, the Upper Moon 1 Demon and Muzan's most powerful demon. Kokushibo just like Kagaku also acquires a breathing style but also an insane blood demon arts on top of it. He truly is the strongest. Kokushibo's breathing style is moon breathing, being a polar opposite to his brother sun breathing. However Kokushibo's blood demon arts is known as crescent moon blades. This technique works perfectly well with his moon breathing, allowing him to create and manipulate dozens of sharp blades shaped like traditional crescent moons from his flesh katana. They are implied to be created from his blood and can be either a bright yellow or a bright blue in colour. These crescent moon blades are extremely chaotic, constantly changing in size, length and speed, making Kokushibo's attacks extremely unpredictable and unreadable as they have no set pattern. This blood demon art greatly enhances the power of his techniques, making every single one of his sword swings extremely deadly and dangerous. He also seems to be capable of using his blood demon art as long as his katana is unsheathed, allowing him to create crescent moon blades even without swinging his sword or unleashing a technique. The volatile nature of his blood demon knot makes it extremely challenging for demon slayers to circumvent. Senemi stated that if not for his years of experience in the field of demon hunting, he wouldn't have been able to defend himself from Kokushibo's attacks. Moving on from Kokushibo, we now get to dive in on the king of all demons and that is Muzan's blood demon arts. Being the very first demon to inhabit the earth, Muzan most definitely has a barrage of attacks under his sleeve since all blood demon arts come from him. Muzan's blood demon art is known as biokinesis, granting him powerful biokinetic abilities. Muzan has displayed the ability to alter and control his flesh, limbs and even his organs. Using his blood demon art, Muzan can change his facial features, replicate and move the organs in his body, create weapons using his flesh and bones, contort his entire torso into a giant mouth or even create flesh puppets that he can control. He can also split himself into hundreds of pieces that can reattach themselves and regenerate into his full body. Muzan also has very unique anatomy, which he achieved by manipulating and altering his own bodily properties. Possessing the grand total of 7 hearts and 5 brains, these extra organs seemingly are largely responsible for the majority of his abnormally powerful constitution and his resistance to decapitation by Nichiren swords. But should many of them be destroyed simultaneously, he would be significantly weakened. In combat, Muzan usually shapes his arm into long whip-like appendages as sharp as swords and creates tubes and whips made of bones and flesh from his spine and his legs. Although Muzan is the creator of all demons and blood demon arts, he only possesses two unique techniques. Techniques, the first one being known as Black Blood Brambles, where he uses his own flesh and blood to create several black spiked barbed wires to entangle his target. The second technique is classed as Shockwave Energy Blast. This occurred in the final arc of the series, where Obanai and Tanjiro managed to corner a battered Muzan. However, Muzan let off this energy blast with it being so powerful that even the Ubuyashiki siblings were hurt just by being connected to Tanjiro and the others, which is insane. I guess this technique would be the hardest to explain, that's how powerful it is. Now to the final blood 
Blood Demon Arts and I just had to keep the best for the last. That is of course Nezuko. Her Blood Demon Arts is known as Pyrokinesis as it allows her to generate and manipulate special demonic flames created from her blood that are pinkish in colour. Nezuko can do this by igniting her blood or creating it from thin air. Her flames have a special property that makes them only harmful to demons and objects of demon origin while being completely harmless to humans and other objects. This was shown when her fire could burn Ruby's threads, Enmu's dream spell and Genya who had consumed demons but was unable to affect Tanjiro and the Mugen train. Her flames have been noted to hamper the regeneration of demons to an extent too, as shown with Darky being temporarily unable to regenerate from being burned by her flames. I know you guys would have thought I would include Demon Tanjiro, but it would have just been futile. He garnered the same blood demon arts as Muzan. We see it when he uncontrollably attacks everyone. So sorry for that piece of clickbait in the thumbnail. Anyways, this was an extremely long video going through each of the blood demon arts in thorough detail. I honestly hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new about these insane blood demon arts. What was your guys' favourite blood demon arts? Mine has to be between Hantengus or Rakazas. Also, if there are any other kinds of demon slayer topics you would like me to cover, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one.